Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. Just a few hours ago, we have learned that Barclays, the 300 year old UK legacy bank, files for two crypto patents. And it's not surprising because there were some rumors going around that they wanted to open their own trading desk. It doesn't get any more legacy financial than Barclays. It is a staple on the English Stock Exchange, along with the definitive seat on the New York Stock Exchange. So at least one study published just a few years ago pins it as the most powerful bank in the world. The bank had been particularly active in the crypto sphere the past two years, summer of last year. It openly worried about crypto's threat to its industry spring of the present year saw it team with coinbase and rumors are it's considering its own crypto trading desk well with these two applications that were filed on july 19th it does indeed look that way so there are three inventors cited there is a julian wilson uh, andrew whaley and a david fulton I'll put the link to both of them down in the comment section. You can read the abstract and actually look at the details if you want to know a little bit more. In San Francisco right now, July 19th and 20th, there is what's called Distributed 2018 and it's all about unlocking the global power of a decentralized business. For $425 a day, you can attend this event. They have a wonderful lineup of speakers, some of my favorite people in the industry. Here is one, Elizabeth Stark. She's the co-founder and CEO at Lightning Labs. And then another one of my favorites, Arthur Hayes. He is the keynote speaker. And as you know, he's the CEO at BitMEX. And if we come down here, we can find Emmy Yoshikawa of Ripple. She's the director joint venture partnership there at Ripple. And she was on a panel today and she tweeted. She tweeted from that event this tweet here. Innovative Asian banks such as Siam Commercial Bank sees blockchain as a huge opportunity to get ahead of competition without being constrained by decades old infrastructure. So you can see uh, she is in the center there and I wish I was able to see and hear her talk, but maybe we're lucky and some of this recorded content will appear on YouTube soon. I looked for it just before I was doing the video and I couldn't find anything yet, but chances are we're going to see some excerpts from this event. So let's stick with Emmy for a moment. We hear a lot about Brad and Ashish and, and David, but I want to just look at Emmy. So here is her Harvard Business School alumni page from Northern California. She graduated in 2011. She was recently named among the top 50 women in fintech influencers by Onalytica. Onalytica is a company we're going to take a look at in a little bit because it has some very interesting information on their website. Prior to Ripple, Emmy co-founded and ran a U.S. Asia business development consulting company and was previously a product manager of industry leading equity portfolio analytics solutions at MSCI. She's originally from Japan and she enjoys traveling abroad and experiencing different cultures, having visited over 40 countries. She speaks Japanese, Chinese, and English. She lives in San Mateo with her family and a pug. San Mateo is just south of San Francisco and north of San Fran or north of Palo Alto. Emmy has her MBA degree from Harvard Business School. She is also uh, a CFA charter holder. If you don't know the CFA, it stands for a Chartered Financial Analyst. And these analysts um, have to 
pass a very difficult test. It takes them two to five years to complete. Some people even argue that being a charter member, you are a charter holder, you are going to make about 25 percent more than your co-workers with MBAs. There's uh, only 120,000 of them yeah, worldwide. Some of the places you find these analysts working are Bank of America. They have 1,449. JP Morgan has uh, 1,204. Morgan Stanley has 855. And Barclays has 662, to just name a few. So I'm very impressed. She is an absolute stellar member of the Ripple team. When we go to Analytica, this company makes a software that allows you to really maximize your brand. Um, that platform mines over 200 billion posts a year, and they have curated a database of over 500,000 social media influencers. I think if you go to this link, you're going to want to look further because you can see some of the top fintech influencers. Now, not only just their name, but you get to see their influencer score and then you can find their Twitter handle. I think if you're in this space and you want timely information, and really be on top of what's happening, you have to be on Twitter as well. So if you are wanting to know who the top AI influencers are, here's your list. If you want to know, want to know who the top blockchain influencers are, here's your list. So I am going to go down here to the top Bitcoin influencers in the fintech community. And number one with a 100% influencer score is Elizabeth Stark, at Starkness is her Twitter handle. I follow her, she tweets a lot. I really enjoy following her. So if you want to add some people to your list, uh, this is a wonderful source to do it from, and I will put it down in the comment section. Well, IDC, IDC is International Data Corporation. They were founded in 1964. They're a market research company. They have like 2,000 analysts that put together these very uh, detailed, extensive reports. Uh, this one talks about the worldwide spending on blockchain forecast to reach 11 billion in 2022. So the interesting thing is 36% of this worldwide spending is going to come from the US and it's driven largely by the rapid adoption of the banking industry, particularly the cross-border payments and settlements. So they look at the Asia Pacific, Japan, Middle East, Africa, US and Western Europe. We are absolutely going to hear a lot of um, quoted information out of this report in the near future for sure. I really wanted to see how Bitbox was doing. So Bitbox is the new exchange that went live about 48 hours ago by the number one messaging app in Japan called Line. I wanted to see because they launched this with 30 coins and in 15 languages. They are still being um, considered by the FSA, Financial Service Agency, to um, operate here in Japan. So they don't have the green light yet, but I know that they will get it soon. The, the reason why I'm so interested is because they have 200 million active users. Uh, they are going to be a huge impact in the space and I just can't wait. So we have to be a little bit more patient here in Japan, but I'm sure they're coming soon. And speaking of the FSA, the Asahi Shimbun paper today, let us uh, know that there is a woman uh, by the name of Noda, and she denies she put pressure on the FSA in probe on cryptocurrency. Well, the Eternal Affairs Minister Seiko Noda 
uh, brushed off suggestions today that she meddled in an investigation by the government agency into a company dealing in cryptocurrency. Uh, you know, th this is just fodder for the other camp to um, keep bubbling in the news for a while. Uh, I think this is, you know, happens all over. It's a, it's a, it's a same, same thing in politics globally is when somebody makes a mistake or does something questionable, the other camps use it to completely uh, make the opposition look bad. So unfortunately, she's going to be uh, in the news for the next couple of days. Okay, I am ready for some fluff. And this fluff is special. If you don't follow this channel on a regular basis, the last story I do is what I call fluff, and it is about uh, Japan. So this story uh, goes out to Grace. There is a, a daughter of one of my subscriber, subscribers who is 13 years old, and she asked her dad, so Eddie, um, what what do Japanese people eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? Do they eat pizzas and hamburgers? Well, Grace, I'm going to show you what Japanese people eat for breakfast. And yes, we do um, have hamburgers and pizza here, but it's not eaten nearly as often as you do in the United States. So let me show you what a Japanese breakfast looks like. This is a typical Japanese breakfast. You will have some sort of fish. Sometimes you have salmon. Sometimes you have one that's uh, called saba or a uh, sama, which are uh, like a mackerel. And you always get a miso soup. The miso soup can be white miso or red miso. And then this is tofu. These are marinated vegetables. And then to the left in front is always your white rice. These are little pickled vegetables that uh, always come in a large assortment. And then this is a sweet omelet. Uh, it's cooked in a broth that makes it a little bit of a, uh, has a little bit of a sweet taste. And then Grace, I wanted to show you this. This is um, one of the other common fish that's served for breakfast. And yes, it has its head on. So sometimes you are looking eye to eye with your breakfast, uh, but it's yummy. This is a grated daikon, which is a radish, and you just add a little bit of soy sauce to it. And then this one is actually a special Japanese citrus, and it's kind of like a lime, and you squeeze it over the top. Oh, it's so good. I just, when I see this picture, this is what I want to eat right now. And this is another just typical breakfast in Japan. And this is saba. Saba is a little more um, fatty in comparison to the other two. And they're super healthy. This is your daikon again. This is natto, which is fermented soybean. This is your pickled vegetable. This is your miso soup, your white rice, and a raw egg. And let me show you how they eat the raw egg. They will combine this natto, which is the fermented soybean. This is how you buy it at the store. And you put it on top of your rice and then put the raw egg on top of that. Uh, and mix it, mix it all together. And it says here that it smells like dirty socks. Well, it does have a strong smell, uh, but it, it just tastes so delicious. And especially if you serve it on top of the warm rice. Oh, yummy. I just know it doesn't look great, but it tastes wonderful. All right, Grace. So that is what Japanese eat for breakfast, and I hope someday you can come here and try it. That's all I have for you today, everybody. Please take care. Sayonara for now. Bye-bye.